Okay, so I'd like to take you through setting up animated constraints and using them with the RH rig. It's pretty common in animation to want to be able to dynamically parent things to other things, to constrain them for a given amount of time so as they stick. This can be props or the body parts of themselves or other characters. When working with props, there's two common ways. You can either constrain the prop to the limb, usually the arm, the hand, which you can do in a couple of different ways. You can just plain old parent it in there, or you can constrain it in a manner pretty much the same as we're going to see here. Or you can constrain an item on the character to the prop, usually an IK limb end. And that's what we're going to see here. So, we'll put our soldier's arm here into our IK mode, and we'll position it on old Han Solo's shoulder over here. Help focus on for IK, there we go. And we can rotate it some, of course, to get it just so, however it is, these, you know, resting on in there. And there we go, so something like that, let's say. Now, the first thing that we need to do is create an item that we're going to constrain to. So we're going to create that from a clone of this one, which is the item that we are constraining. So we clone it once. The first thing we do is open its motion options. We make sure that it's stripped of any motion controllers. In this case, that's the point and orient constraint that are used in the auto snap system there. We don't need them on this clone. And we're also going to find it. Here it is in schematic, and we're going to just pull it out there. And we're going to rename it something. We're just going to call it the IKG snap for quickness and ease. Now, of course, where that wants to go, that wants to be a child of his clavicle joint for the shoulder there. So we're going to pull it down to our Han Solo character here, um, and we're going to parent it into the FK system here. Now, of course, our shoulder runs off of this IK-like control, but it's not true IK. You see there's slip that occurs as you go higher and higher and higher, so we don't want to parent to that. We want to parent to the actual FK clavicle rotator, um, which we can see here is the L clav. So holding control, I can just click parent to that. And now we just leave it alone. We don't want to position it or rotate it at all. We'll see that the axis have jumped, of course, when we parented it, but we don't record its pivot or anything else like that. We want to leave it alone for it to work properly. We can also, by the way, remove its item shape, because we don't need that, and that actually makes things a little clearer for us, so that's good. We then jump back to our original IK goal here and bring up its motion options. And we want to set its rotation item to this IKG snap we just made. Set everything to same as item and turn on world. Then do exactly the same for position. And now whatever this IKG snap null does will happen to the IK. It happens in world space, of course. So when the shoulder is moved, we get this. And the hand sticks. And it works, of course, complete throughout the Han Solo rig like that with no problems whatsoever. Now we come on to the question of what happens if we've got multiple constraints happening during our animation. What if we want to be able to stick to one thing for a few frames here and then stick to something else after if he wants to, you know, hold his head and then hold his leg or whatever. Um, how do we do that? Because, of course, if we look at the motion options where we've set up same as item, that's all we've got is one instance of it on this item. We can't set up yet another constraint. So our constraint is effectively single-layered. So in order to create multiple constraints within a scene, we need to layer them. So what I'm going to do now is basically the same sort of thing. Right, I'm going to take the IKG snap here, which we're currently snapped to. I'm going to bring this down towards his lower leg here, which he can't reach. That's out of his reach, so I'm just going to lower him down and manipulate him about so as he's able to lean over and reach his lower leg there. A little bit extreme, but still, we get the idea. Back to my IKG snap null there. and I'm going to rotate it into a semblance of how I want him holding his lower leg here. We've animated to the contact point, as it were. And then I'm just going to repeat the procedure. I'm going to clone it. Let's call this the snap2 for speed and ease. Bring it, up to this, bring it up to the soldier's right leg here and just um, 
clip parent it under the knee there so it's now parented to the lower leg portion I again set position and rotation item to go to this new snap to null in world mode and as we can see we have now reconstrained over to our original character again and the hand is sticking nicely to the lower leg there um, as we would want it to you notice of course that in both these instances when I parented the snap null I parented it under the FK system again here on the soldier's leg I parented it under the FK knee controller this means of course that the snap works in both the FK mode and the IK mode here for the leg and this is the same throughout the RH rig all of these parts are transparent to one another um, at least down to the FK level so if you are wanting to constrain one part to another say the hand to the head as long as you constrain to the FK head control or rather in the case of the head the head offset control which is of course the final parent of the FK head chain then you could be using the head float control to do your animation of the head and of course the hand would stick to that just fine and so on and so forth and that's also transparent between characters as we saw with the Han Solo shoulder which has this kind of control set up but the IK of our other character can still see it happening and constrain to it properly the other thing to remember of course is that to snap out of it is easy enough because it's the old same as item constraint system if we want to snap back out again then of course we select our IK goal here which has been constrained we key it in its current position we set the constraint percentages back to zero of course we animate them using the graph in the envelope there and we've now switched out um, of that space and we're back to normal control once again and that's all that there is to it I hope that helps you to understand the animated constraint process in Lightwave with these character rigs and to put it to best use in your animations